because I used to even question, isn't our God powerful enough to protect, to guard and to save his own? How are you doing my family welcome again to direct tv bringing to you the truth welcome guys to this special and wonderful episode of my video today all right in today's video guys i'm here with the man of god by person of you know his excellency prophet emmanuel makandiwa and you know the incident that uh, happened in one of christ embassy church um you know lagos has actually made me to bring out many of these videos to you that follows me because um you're going to be so blessed you know after listening to the man of god prophet emmanuel makandiwa on this thing Oh my goodness, you, you know, it's going to blow your mind. That's all I can just say. It's going to blow your mind. You now know why you should be happy when you face problems. You should be excited when you face problems. So in fact, you should be looking for problems. You know, Pastor Creed said that once. Look for problems if you don't have one. All right. So before we dive into the video, guys, for those of you coming um, very newly to my channel, just kindly hit the subscribe button and subscribe to this channel. And then if you ever like the video, hit the like button like today's video, guys. Watch this and I'll be right back. There is peace between us and God because faith because of faith we got justified uh -huh. and rejoice in hope of the glory of God yeah and not only so not only uh -huh. but we glory in but tribulations we also glory in tribulations also in tribulations also we glory yeah the glory there is we rejoice, we glow, we shine. There must be a mystery to the tribulation, to the afflictions that we go through. Now, he's saying, we glory also in what? Tribulations. Now, this is the reason why we glory. Knowing that tribulation. Now, we know it's because we know. Not everyone knows. Yeah. I'm helping you to know now. Yeah. Now, he says, we know. What, what does he know? Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Tribulation worketh. Tribulation produces. What is that? That's what you're here to know. Paul is saying, because we know the end product. Therefore, we glory yeah. in tribulations. What is this man saying? Because I used to wonder, because I used to even question, isn't our God powerful enough to protect, to guard, and to save his own from afflictions? Where is God when I'm going through this? I'm wondering what kind of a God that features after my blood has been spilled. And he tells my adversary, Cain, that the blood of your brother is crying from the ground. He's a God who comes after I've already been slaughtered. And I'm asking myself, where were you when an enemy was planning and plotting against my life you are an all seeing God an all knowing God you knew what they were up to you never intervened you never stopped the devil from coming against me you waited until a court session where a murderer now has to appear and you, are, you question him where is your brother yet you knew exactly what had happened to me what kind of a God is this? I need to understand it. It's a mystery. Let's unveil it. Yes. Let's open it up. Why is it that the Bible declares that the more they afflicted Israel in Egypt, the more they multiplied and increased. Their number, their power, their influence was as a result of having been afflicted. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. As if they were not growing. As if they were not multiplying. Yet they afflicted them because they were multiplying. They said these people are becoming too many. 
if an enemy comes against us, they are going to join our enemy and we are going to be overpowered. Let us afflict them so that we control the birth rate. The more they afflicted them, what is it in us that we are not aware of that requires an affliction before multiplication can happen? Because you are praying against some of these experiences that some of you here are going through. And God seems not to be interested in taking it away. What kind of a thorn is this that is not responding to this kind of grace, this power, this anointing that you see every day? Everyone who comes here to church, he gives a testimony. This is what God did for me. And you're wondering, how come I've had the problem ever since I joined this ministry? What kind of a problem is that you are calling it a problem? I'm here tonight to let you know that that might actually be an ingredient. Now, the growth started the day the affliction arrived in the camp. Talk to me about that. What is that with the child of God that you afflict him? You want to you pull him down the more he rises up. What is it? The day that they fire you from work, that's the beginning of a new operation, a new program, a new project, a new company. The idea, the dream that you carry will be dormant until they fire you. Something had to happen. Something brought the gold to the surface. God was there right from the core of the earth, but we couldn't have it here until there was an affliction there was need for earth to be afflicted in order for the gold of the earth to come out you, you, you look at the life of Jesus he needed to be at a place called the crushing in Gethsemane the place of the crushing that's where sweat came out like blood he healed multitudes he performed all sorts of things. We never saw him sweating to that extent until he was taken to the place of the crushing. And we start to see something coming out of his body as a result of a crushing, a pressing. And unless you are pressed, we'll never get to see the juice that you carry. No orange juice, my brother unless there is a crashing at some point. There is no mango juice, forget it. Unless there is a crashing at some point. We are not aware of the capacity that you carry unless you are exposed to pressure at some point. Therefore, we glory in afflictions because we know what is eventually going to come out of us. God came here through two major pathways. Because of pressure underneath, there is a pressing, there is a squeezing. And God needed to come out of the core of the earth. And for the God to find its way to the surface of the earth, it needed to look for fractures, broken places of the earth. The earth in as much as we see it is one mass, it's broken. It's a combination of different types of rocks. And because of pressure, minerals had to find places of brokenness. And you find gold, you'll find copper in places where the earth suffered afflictions. Yeah. That's where gold is kept. Your value if you are to listen to me tonight, you will understand your value in this life will be discovered in your places of brokenness. Things that are happening to you today, things today, you are being prepared for certain fluids. Your strength will come out of your weakness. And somebody had a revelation, he said, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. What is he saying? 
What is what what is he saying? When I'm weak, then I'm strong. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. What is he saying? If I'm to visit strength in my body, I have to identify my place of weakness. When the devil is telling me that you're weak here and there, I tell him I'm strong there and there. That's the place of value. Don't let the devil condemn you because of a weakness. Because when you are weak, that's exactly where you are. You're strong. God will use those cracks as passages. Minerals will come out of you from those places of afflictions. So, so now Paul is saying, so that's why we glory in our afflictions and tribulations. So that you don't see this as an attack from the devil. You will discover today that in every place where you experienced brokenness, it was a strategy by the creator. You thought God had forgotten you. You thought this suffering was for nothing. Wait and see. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 10 Therefore I take pleasure in the infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. To think that you can number your weaknesses from today and that becomes the total number of your strength. That's the number of, you count your afflictions tonight. That's the total number of your strength, of your potential, of your capacities. My God. Let me talk to my son and to my daughter tonight. Your value will settle in those places of brokenness. What they did to you. Show me the people that are against you. And I'll show you where you're going. Show me the size of your enemies and I'll show you how big you are. There will come a day, some of you, you will wish they had broken you even more. Today it's a problem you are crying because of brokenness. Something happened to me. Marble. Marble. It's very expensive. Why marble? It's a metamorphic rock. It is. It was once a different rock. What you see today is not what it was yesterday. It was once a limestone and then it got subjected to heat. And it became a marble as a result of its reaction to pressure. How you react, how you respond to heat. So the marble is going to glory in tribulations. Had it not been for the heat, I wouldn't be in palaces today. Why should I glory in tribulations? Because now I know what it works. I'm celebrating, I'm rejoicing over what I'm going through because now I know. Before, I used to pray against these things. But now that I know, I rejoice in that glory. The more they persecute, the more I increase. Have you ever wondered why Jesus said, never should you cast your pearls before swine. You know an oyster? Huh? You know that, that kind of a fish with shells? That's where you find what? Pearls. It is not saying you don't cast their pearls before this. He's saying your pearls. A pearl was the oyster's reaction to an infection. When something gets into the body of the oyster, even a grain of sand that becomes a foreign body. Yeah. And when that thing starts to irritate the oyster, the oyster is going to react, not in form of tears. The fluid is called nectar. The reaction of an oyster is to try by all means to make that problem one with itself. 
since I cannot delete my history, I cannot correct what has already happened to me. But God has given me a naka. It's a liquid in me. My reaction to that problem. Yes, I'm infected today. If you come seven years later, what you're going to find is no longer a grain of sand in my body. It's a pearl. It's a pearl. Am I talking to somebody? Now, you cannot open an oyster and you find five pearls unless that oyster had had five afflictions. The number of pearls, you're not following this. The number, you can tell. The more these foreign bodies get, you can open one oyster and find seven pearls. And you know that one pearl, that one oyster with seven pearls is more expensive than an oyster with no pearl. Because that oyster has never had an experience. No affliction, no tribulation, no infection, no problems, no value. I have a lot of things that I had to deal with personally. Today I have more pearls because of the experiences that I've had in my life. It's how you react, it's how you respond to problems in life that will add to your value. It's how you respond. What comes out of you is it complains. We have to be able to release the knocker. Are you listening to me? Why is Jesus saying, do not cast your pearls before swine? He's telling you that you also have the same capacity, same ability to produce value. Pearls as a result of your reaction to situations. Problems must not leave you miserable. They have to leave you more valuable. You say I'm here today because I suffered a lot. I'm a product of problems. I overcame all of them. Why? Because I knew how to release what was needed against a situation. It's not every problem that you have that is going to disappear. No. Most of those problems will be turned into pearls. All right, my family. There you have it with the prophet of God, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. They say a lot of people don't like him. They say he's fake, he's this, he's that. That's that business. I, I don't care. All right. But I believe in the man of God, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. You see, so if you don't believe, that's your business. But I believe you are blessed in this video. Man. Oh, my goodness. Ha. Ah, now you should be looking for problems. If you are having problems in your life, you should be excited because that's an avenue for a bigger, a bigger serve of yours. All right. So, um, and you know, if you don't have problems, you gotta look for one. You gotta look for problems. You have problems because problems are, you know, a step to, you know, a greater you. That's all I can tell you. And you know, the words of the man of God, the way he explains it, you know, his composure. Oh my goodness! See the way it takes time to explain the fact that, you know, um, problems are good. You see. Don't just face problems. And that's how the man of God, Pastor Chris, reacted to, you know, the incident that happened. He didn't begin to complain. Oh, why should fire? How did the fire come about? No. Oh, my goodness. The man of God, Pastor Chris, you know, um, actually, you know, maintained 100% composure. <laughs> my goodness. You know, it was just everywhere. He maintained 100% composure. And, you see, and he reacted so well. You see, and he also said it's going to be a better one. And that's exactly we should be, how we should be reacting to problems. You see, that's why we must be excited when problems come. Uh, I can imagine how that, what will become of that building, you know, after now. Anyways, I believe you are blessed in today's video, guys. And I want to look forward to seeing my next video. Don't forget to kindly hit the subscribe button and then like today's video. Bye.